garden tour. It's been quite some time since I've actually done a full one and there's lots out there. There's lots that need to be done. It is mid-afternoon so I have to have my sunglasses on. It is like squinty squinty land so there's that. And also rain's on just about to come which is really needed. We've only had one like downpour rain for rainy season um, so far and yeah we are in dire need. Um, so let's go out to the front and see what we see. Hopefully somebody walks by and then I have to talk while people walk by. That's always comfortable. As you can see, there is a lot to do in the front, but there's also a lot happening, so that's good. I did start to get some of the weeds cleared up here. Um, the golden creeper, that is the stuff that is going to form a small little hedge border, is coming in amazingly well. Have not hardly watered it since installing it. It is a native, so it should do that once it's established. Behind it are some native pentas. These do need water badly. Like I said, we are getting some rain today. Let's, yeah, okay. Let's walk over here. And holy moly, look at all the grass that's coming in. This is torpedo grass, which is my nemesis. Um, but let's just try to look at the bigger picture. I'm gonna zoom out just for a little bit. Um, so you can see that the this will fill in and then the plan is to add way more flowers in here. There are some um, pentas here. I have a volunteer tomato plant. That's what I have staked right there. It's kind of looking a little janky. I'm pretty sure I should pull that out actually because it's making it look messier than needs to be. And as you can see I do have some mulch. I ordered a weed stirrup like it's a tool that I'm hoping I can do a much better or much easier job of getting rid of all these weeds that are on the edges of the yard and then I can proceed to mulch. So that's what's gonna happen over there soon. The cocoa plum hedge is coming in bomb.com. I will put in a like snippet of what the yard looked like literally two years ago in like June-ish and it's nuts. Again, right now it's very overweeded or very weedy, and yeah, I have a lot to do out here, but it's crazy. It used to be just a front yard of lawn, and it is starting to take shape. My um, idea, if you haven't watched that previous one, which, you know, two years ago, so don't blame you if you haven't, uh, is to have like a native Floridian tropical garden with kind of a, call it a European English garden feel. So the borders is my attempt to kind of control the chaos and then have it be very cottagey with flowers in between. Um, so that is what is happening. It is a in progress, clearly. Um, cocoa palms, I could actually come in and trim again. They're really starting to grow very nicely. Coming up the middle, we have the um, cattle panel trellises. This is taking off awesome. This is also a native vine. This is called coral jessamine. In February and March, it blooms with the most beautiful blooms. Bright, like pretty yellow, almost kind of like the yellow down in there, which is also a native ground cover. Um, that is called perennial peanut, which is being surrounded by the stupid torpedo grass. Um, but anyway, so this will completely cover. I actually have another one here that's doing pretty bad, but once the rains come, I think it'll start to go. This will create just this fairy tale kind of entryway into the garden um, with pavers. These are just sort of my temporary ones. These were the broken bits and pieces from um, having our lanai pool surround done last summer so yeah again we're looking at these this whole thing <laughs> with rose colored glasses right this is a native it's called a lizard tail um, and it's just starting to bloom but you can see that the oops, that the little tiny blooms literally look like a little tail I cut this back with a vengeance it'll get huge and I just whack it down and it keeps coming back 
that's the awesomeness of it being a native. Uh, that chair does not belong there, but I started another project, which probably shouldn't be started heading into summer because I'm a crazy person, uh, clearing out this middle circle. So I'm planning to get rid of all, well not get rid of, level it all out and then get pavers to put in the middle to create the cutest little like seating area in the midst of walking through the tunnels of flowering vines and it's going to be so pretty. I cannot wait. I did find some free pavers today on the Facebook marketplace. However, it's 95 degrees and Eddie and I did not want to have to go get them, but now I'm kind of regretting that choice. But envision it with pavers and then I have a cute uh, bird, bird uh, what do you call it? Bird bath that's going to sit in the middle. These old metal chairs can sit there and look so cute. This is some lighting for around it. Again, rose-colored glasses, everybody. Behind the circle here, we've got some cannas. That's literally just to keep it from being overly weeded, and I have yet to ever, or to actually do anything in there. And then these flower, which you can see they're kind of spent blooms now, with really pretty, um, very tropical looking floral flowers, and I love them. And I don't know that I will ever change it. And then within it, um, there are uh, milkweed for the butterflies, for the monarchs. Currently, it's kind of in dormancy. They'll come back. That one's looking a little bit better. Again, we're in super dry season, and I haven't done a ton of watering. It's kind of survive or you don't belong in the garden situation at this point. Um, if I spin around, we got a desert rose there um, coming up on this trellis. This is probably the youngest vine. This is a coral honeysuckle, also a Florida native. Eventually this will have all kinds of um, pollinators on it and hummingbirds love these things. They smell really good when they're in full bloom. So imagine that with all this coral honeysuckle draped over the top of this arch. This one here with the yellow jessamine and this one here has um, the native version of, oh man, I'm going to blank on the word here. Oh man, we'll come back to it. It'll come to me. And then also coming up this side, I have some more coral honeysuckle. I've got a whole ton of self-seeded Rudbeckia, uh, black-eyed Susan, another desert rose, and then here's the start of my work, which looks like I did nothing, but it filled up two bins plus half of that blue bin. I'm not really sure where I'm going to put the rest of this because I don't want to get rid of it because it'll make really good compacted uh, rocks, gravel for underneath the pavers, but right now, yikes. I have two David Austin roses, one right there and one right there that's kind of hiding behind that shovel. Uh, that are These are Vanessa Bells. That one's not doing as well as this one. I'm not sure if it's because it's getting choked out by the perennial peanut, which is the ground cover you see there. That is coming along. I started that with like three plants. So I might live to regret that, but that's like, in addition to my mulch, also helps with like uh, nutrients in the soil, that type of thing. And it's supposed to win out over the torpedo grass. We shall see. On this trellis, I did have tomatoes. Those have now been ripped out. I can see there's some things coming up. I'm not really sure what they are, so I'm leaving them for now. And then behind there, that is... Here, I'll walk over there without... This is a guava tree with tons of fruit on it. I mean, look at the size of those. This thing is just going bonkers. And I have trimmed it purposefully to stay small so it doesn't become overbearing and massive and that way we can get the fruit off of it. And then two pineapples, which still haven't figured out when they are ready to go, but they just keep growing so I just keep leaving them there. Those are the tops of pineapples from the store. I think they look amazing. And then behind the guava are, this is crazy since the last time I did any sort of update, are uh, a mixture of some coral bells. These are annuals from Proven Winners. Uh, I did a previous video with all the names of them. Some of them are doing all right. Some of them not so great. 
I think once the rains start, we're going to probably see them do a lot better. But like, look how pretty the purple ones are, the coral one up there, and the yellow ones are doing great. So they just need more water. I have nothing on irrigation up here. I have to remember to come out and hand water them every other day or so. So, you know, can't, can't uh, spite them for their lack of babysitting on my part. Now here's some updates. These are the Floret Farms Originals, Zinnia, and actually let's start here. What I thought were dahlias actually are the Celosias that I thought I had zero, oops, hold on, let's go to regular. I thought I had zero plants of, and look at this. The plants are getting huge. Had I known this was Celosia, I would have like, cut them down more. Look at the stock on this. It's like the size of my finger. I just, it's crazy to me that this is what I thought was zero celosia and all dahlia. I believe to now be maybe no dahlia and all celosia. So there's that. I think it's craziness. So we've got that celosia there, which is raspberry lemonade. We're starting to see some blooms on the zinnias. I think these ones are the Dawn Creek Blush and the Rainbow something. I'll put a little thing up on the screen of what these are. But they're all starting to come in bloom. Let's go regular again. They're starting to bloom out and there's all kinds of different, uh, much like zinnias, they've got different bloom styles. These ones look like the fireworks sort of, which I think they're pretty. These, I think, are the, it's the other ones that look kind of pale. But, I mean, I don't know how to put this into words, how crazy it is that I ended up with, I think, no dahlias and all celosia when I thought I had zero celosia and all dahlia. I'm bummed about the dahlia. I'm excited about the celosia. I, it's just cuckoo pants for me. And again, more mulch that needs to be brought in here. I think there's lots of bees that fly around over here, so I'm wondering if I have like a, a pollinator, some type of bee. Also, there's, yeah, there's, I don't know. I've never, they don't seem to be like mad at me for coming over here, but there's always bees right here. I'm, I'm not really sure why. Onward! These are, um, I moved some more of that Rebecca, the Black Eyed Susan that were volunteers over there to try to fill in here. Some of them are taking, some of them are not. It's fine. And then here is some alyssum. That's my only alyssum that's managed to live. My neighbor gave me some, um, what's it called? Thai basil have to figure out where I want those so at this point I think the seeds have gone everywhere and I'm hoping they have and maybe they'll just pop up at some point next year. This is my most uh, obviously created path at this point. Still need to get this side so eventually all of my yard will be mulch slash the perennial peanut and flowers contained within these like cute borders and that needs to happen over here next so That'll be a hedge that'll be trimmed. Behind it are the Hawaiian tea plants. Technically not a native, neither are these doohickeys, which I can't think of the name of. I'll pop that up on the screen. But they do really well here. Um, I can show you my neighbors over there have a much more established hedge. And I just think they're pretty with the variegated foliage. So they get to belong. So eventually that path will continue kind of around there. But let's kind of look this way. This one's doing awesome. That one's doing mediocre. The one in between died, and that one's doing mediocre. Behind it, we have um, some more pineapples and then a Myers lemon tree. I don't know what keeps trying to eat this guy, but it just keeps chugging along, doing its best, trying to be awesome. Oop, I'm feeling a sprinkle. Oh, look it up in the sky. We might get rain, yay! Let's move on faster then, faster, Adrian. Uh, we've got a grape here that looks fairly mediocre. Uh, I forget the name of this. I'll put that up on the screen. Muscadine, it's a muscadine grape. 
Uh, that was a tomato that's now kind of spent. Got some more pineapple, more of the milkweed, tropical milkweed that's native here for the butterflies. If I spin this direction, this tea bush is looking amazing. I cut it down, I don't know, probably twice a year to manageable height, and then it just grows back. This thing is always a hum, hum, hum of butterflies, not butterflies, of bee, of pollinator bees. They love it, and I love it. I was going to move it at one point, and then I decided, like, it, it's so huge. If you look at the trunk in there, it's like a mini tree at this point, so it just gets to stay. I have more pineapples. They're doing mediocre. A bougainvillea vine that eventually I want to go, like, up and around the whole front of the house. Also doing mediocre. I haven't watered it. They're kind of finicky even though they also are supposed to be invasive. I'm not sure how because they're so finicky. Growing around it is the sunshine mimosa, also called the sensitive plant. When you touch the leaves of them, they fold up. I guess you gotta actually touch it to demonstrate it. But they will fold up like in half upon themselves. There you go, that's a better. Also a native ground cover. They have cute little pink poofs on them when they are in bloom. Coming around, we have got a beautiful olive tree. Also, I have topped it to keep it small. I kind of think maybe I should have had it go a little taller at this point, but it is what it is. And it's so cute. I actually want more of the olive trees because I just think it's really a pretty, pretty, pretty tree. More pineapples below it. Also need more mulch. And then let's spin this direction, looking at the garden from this way. We'll say more pineapples, another muscadine grape. So between the coral honeysuckle, the grape, the coral honeysuckle, the right there, the grape, and the jasmine. That's what it is, Confederate jasmine. Woo woo! The one I couldn't remember earlier. Um, this, these trellises will just be tunnels of lushness and beautiful, and I cannot wait. And then here's the start of another path coming out from the circle, and then my pathetic, pathetic continuation of the path, and then eventually it'll go around to the back. So, like, there's my neighbor. Theirs are in really, they've been there for I don't even know how long. Um, and then right here is a uh, Barbados cherry. A Sorello, I never say it right. Also not very happy with me because I forget to water it and it's not on any sort of irrigation and at some point it will fruit for me when I start to do a better job, but until we get the irrigation in, that's what it is. Cocoa plum, oh you can actually see the cocoa plums on this side a little bit better. I've never actually harvested any of them. Uh, they actually kind of look like some of them are ready to go. Look at all of them. Oh yeah, they're way far. The birds are getting them. Looks like we won't harvest any of those. Sprinkle, sprinkle on me. Let's finish up, finish up. Uh, over here we have mooly grass, which you can see I trimmed them down. I should have done them a little earlier. They look slightly silly when they're, I guess, kind of hedgehog shaved, but there they be. Behind it's a rose tree. It's just a general rose tree. We brought it with from up north. It was actually at my dad's um, celebration of life service and it's kind of in between its blooms. I need to come in and do a little bit of pruning on it, do a little cleanup of the weeds underneath it, remulch it, etc. This is my project in limbo, in progress, where it will have a, an espalier slash trellis um, confederate jasmine that goes up in a diamond shape it's going to be cool probably actually could do it since it's cooling off with the rain coming but also not happening that is a gigantic out of control bird of paradise with some sort of weed growing out of it i've tried to lop it down but that thing is like insane insane in the membrane um insanely it's the roots are so in there i i just i don't know i can't get it and then I said it was only going to be in the front yard. Um, I never did do a final banana update after I chopped the other bananas off that were ready. They are harvested. I have four big gallon-sized bags 
no, not gallon, quart size bags of bananas in the freezer for smoothies and banana bread and such. And then status update on the other that dropped. It's got several months to go. Uh, all the rains will make it go probably a lot quicker. And then I actually should, we have a couple of new pups. That's what the next little trees are. Actually, those are probably too far, too, too big to move. But I'd like to start a whole nother banana plant bunch with its next pup whenever it comes up. And it's actually, bananas are really a messy looking plant, but I, I leave all of this debris and crap on there because it's like a, its own mulch. Oh, there's one. I can move that one right there. Um, it's like a mulch. It helps to keep it from drying out in the dry weather. Once it gets really rainy here, I will come in and kind of ch -ch 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 -ch, clean it up some and then drop it down and it becomes its own fertilizer mulch. And I think we are going to be done because it is starting to sprinkle a little heavier. But yeah, front yard, June 2024, update. Here is a flashback to June of 2022. I will go ahead and link this original tour, but as you can see, this was when the cocoa plums were babies. I had my citrus trees in place, but not planted yet. Absolutely none of the mulch was in, and yeah, this is so fun to look back and see how far I've come in just a short amount of time. I especially enjoy looking at the house when it was uh, still that gray bl grayish blue color uh, before I painted it pink and before the front door went green. I can't wait to see what this garden looks like in another, gosh, six months from now, year from now, and I hope you continue to join for that journey. I appreciate you, and like I said, click on whatever these little boxes are that'll bring you back to that original uh, garden tour. Thanks!